You saw Dominic Cummings in Portcullis House, and, and, and what happened next, Carl? I did indeed, um, Darren. Um, I've been followed around by an independent filmmaker, actually, who's making a documentary film about MPs representing constituents which voted leave uh, um, and the dilemma uh, and the issues that arise from that. So it wasn't a member of staff filming me. It was somebody who was making a film uh, for a documentary. I saw Dominic Cummings. The context is I'd had very serious death threats overnight. When I'm in Westminster and my wife and daughter are in Hull, uh, I'm, those death threats worry me a great deal, to be quite honest with you. I saw Dominic Cummings... I mentioned the fact that I'd had death threats overnight. I think the tone the Prime Minister has adopted, frankly, is causing these death threats to MPs. And I said that to him. He then said, if you vote for Brexit or words to that effect, the, the death threats will stop. Which if you I vote for a deal. Outrageous. Yeah, if you vote for a deal. Which, you know, I think the implication from that is pretty obvious, actually. You know, Vote for a deal, and then, you know, the death threats will stop. Well, well this actually, is... I've tried to vote for a deal, but the deal that's been offered to me by the former Prime Minister has been right. a deal that I couldn't vote for. Well, also last night, and this would have been subsequent to your altercation with him, Carl, Dominic Cummings was asked if he blamed MPs for the abuse they were receiving, and he said in response to that, if you are a bunch of politicians and say that we swear we're going to respect the result of a democratic vote, and then after you lose, you say we don't want to respect that vote, what do you expect to happen? So what do you make mm. of that response to that question? Well, I mean, that, I mean the implication from that is just obvious, and it? it's pretty dreadful, really, but... The tone that's been adopted by the Prime Minister... Just, just to be clear, sorry, Carl, just to be clear, what do you think the implication is? Well, look, I mean, what Dominic Cummings said to me was vote for a deal uh, or words to that effect and the death threats will stop. That's what he meant by what he said. And, you know, that's just threatening. So you, you feel that he is, in fact, in terms, blaming MPs for, their own, for the abuse they're receiving? Of course, it's you know it's it's blaming MPs for the abuse that they're receiving. Um, you know, it, it really is, and and, and the, the rhetoric is really really dreadful. People go, to, you know, MPs do the best to represent the constituents. You know, they're not there to try and block Brexit. If the prime, if the former prime minister had brought a deal to Parliament that I thought I could agree with, and that would be you know, suitable for the constituency that I represent, I would have voted for it. The, you know, coming says this to me, you know, vote for a deal then. Well, there's no deal to vote for. I want to read you a couple of messages which have come in, Carl. I think both of these were sent before we knew that we'd be speaking to you. Tonight you were driving back up, I think, to your constituency and you messaged us, uh, mm. responding to an earlier invitation to come on the show. So we're, we're grateful for, for your time. But let me read you these. Uh, Peter Hughes says, well done, Boris. Did you see the rude and abusive Labour MP attack Dominic Cummings? Typical rude and aggressive type and thugs like him are criticising Boris. You couldn't make it up. When will Turner apologise? Turner should have introduced himself. And then in response to our question as to whether this is an electoral strategy, he says it is the new strategy. So respond to that. A call there from, from Peter, uh, Carl, asking you to apologise to Dominic Cummings. Look, you know, this is ridiculous, actually. You, you know, the Prime Minister should be uh, Prime Ministerial. Theresa May, I wasn't a fan of, but she would never have behaved in this way. Um, it, it is just grotesque, the language that's been adopted, and it's very deliberate. It's a strategy of Dominic Cummings and the government, the Prime Minister, to force MPs into a position whereby they're fearful. That can't be right. Is it also an electoral strategy that Dominic Cummings and Boris Johnson want to get maybe 32, 33, maybe 34% of the public absolutely on their side, which would be enough to win a majority? I think that's probably right, yes. And, I, I, you know, it, it's... You know, when you see it and it's blatant, uh, um, it, it's... It's not very democratic, and it's well, pretty frightening, actually. Why do you think... I mean, if, if that is the strategy, then it's presumably one which they believe works. Why why do they think that a third of the country, roughly, or a third of voters, would respond positively to it as a strategy? 
I don't know what their thinking is, but I mean, the, the tactic is, is populism, isn't it? It's just, you know, let's just, you know, be... It's the Trump strategy, straight from Donald Trump, in my view. And it's really, really, uh, you know, quite grotesque when you're on the receiving end of it. The other message... The context, the, the context is important, I think. I've received death threats regularly. Mainly women MPs receive vitriol and death threats regularly. It doesn't really happen to me very often, but it's happened on more than one occasion. You know, my wife and child are in Hull. I'm in Westminster. When I get death threats, I worry about my child. It shouldn't be happening. The Prime Minister shouldn't be allowing this to happen. But I, he is. I absolutely, by, ask, by asking this question, I do not want to minimise at all the seriousness of, of the threat to anyone. But the threats that you have received, Carl, and again, you, you won't want to go into detail, obviously, or at least identifying details. But are the threats that you have received, have they been judged to be what you might call serious? Have they been viewed as, as, as my, genuine my, threats? Da Darren, my daughter is three years old. Mm. When my wife was about to give birth... A man burst in to our home, wrestled with me, tried to arrest me. The police were involved. He tried to arrest you. An injunction you. was granted. The man was def the man was alleging that he was trying to make a mm. uh, do a citizen's arrest on me. You know, threats are serious. Joe Cox was assassinated. From Kieran, I said there was another message I wanted to read to you, Carl. Um, and this is, I think, judging by when Kieran sent this, this would be in response to Anna Turley, to whom we spoke at the start of the show. So I don't think this does refer to you, but you might want to take this on the chin from Kieran. He says, you and the Labour MP are completely wrong. It was awful of Labour to even invoke Joe Cox's name in the chamber in the first place. They raised it, and when Johnson responded, they acted outraged. I support Boris on this, and I want him to double down against you utterly pathetic, hypocritical snowflakes I want him to take you on and get rid of you all, says Kieran. You might want to respond to that on behalf of well, Anna Turley and anyone else who feels they were targeted by that. I just think it's really quite sad, to be honest with you. Um, you know, as I said, members of Parliament of all political persuasions go there to try and do a job. We don't expect to be threatened with our lives. It's not just... Uh, MPs who support Remain or are perceived support Remain who have been threatened. It's uh, members who are perceived to be supporting Leave who are threatened as well. I suspect less so. And it's, I suspect, less vitriolic. But I don't know. They say they've been threatened. You know, we shouldn't be threatened for doing our job. My job is to represent the electorate who put me in. I'm supposed to go and challenge the government on policy. I'm supposed to make a decision on their behalf. That's my job. If the electorate don't like me as a result of the decisions I make, they're entitled to get rid of me at an election. I would say we've, got, a, we've got about a minute left on, on this, Carl. But given that, as far as I can see, about half of the country is going to be absolutely furious for the foreseeable future. How does this end? How do we get to a place where the country comes back together? Oh, goodness, I don't know the answer to that question, really. This is, you know, the, 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 this, the, the, the referendum that David Cameron decided was a good idea uh, in response to trying to keep his party together, I think, um, uh, has caused all of this. Um, we are where we are. People didn't come to me with problems about the EU prior to David Cameron deciding he wanted a referendum. It was about number 9, 10, 11 yeah. in the, the subjects yeah. that was brought to me. You know, it's become a major issue. And this, this rhetoric about um, the parliament versus the people mm. is disgusting. And, and the prime minister must really, really take responsibility for that.